Hey friends, lots of talk about AI these days. And one of the things that I wanted to show folks was that you can run a local large language model on your local machine. Now you need a machine with a decent video card to do this kind of work, uh, but it's just useful to know that you can do, you know, chatbots, you can talk to a chatbot, you can even pretend to be the open AI endpoint without having to be, you know, out of airplane mode. You can do this work on an airplane because you don't always need or want to send all of your data off to OpenAI or Azure OpenAI Studio or something like that. Sometimes you want that data to be local. So I just want to remind people that local models exist. So I'll show you a couple of ways that you can you can do that work. So here's my uh, my machine right now. Let's just take a real quick look at what this machine has. This is a desktop, but I've done this before on a uh, on a laptop as well. So here we've got uh, an NVIDIA 3080. So it's a decent sized machine. Um, and I am, uh, I've got about 10 gigs of RAM on this particular GPU. Um, you can go and see whether or not you can run uh, a local model on your machine by right clicking on the start menu and then clicking on device manager. And then go over here, open up display adapters and then take a look at whether or not you have a, you know, a decent video card. A decent video card would be usually a 2080 or a 3080. I've seen people do it on a 1080, uh, but you're going to be pushing the limits, so you're going to want to be careful. If you only have Intel on yours, you probably won't be able to do it, especially if it's a laptop. But uh, you can always find out and give it a try, and if your computer blows up, then you'll know what happened. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to download LM Studios. This is LM Studio. Dot AI. There's a couple different choices here. First is LM Studio, and then I'll show you Olama. This one is great. It runs on Windows, Mac, and Linux. So I'll bring this up here, and you can go to their kind of little store. It's basically a little discovery location. You can pick different flavors of different, uh, different models, and different models are trained for different stuff. Here's one uh, from Microsoft called Phi 2, and they talk about the things that it's good at, right? So like this one here has not undergone any fine tuning. Uh, it is open source and they're focusing on toxicity reduction. And you can go and download it. You can see this one's about two gigs quantized. It's basically squished. And uh, I can scroll, scroll, scroll and find all kinds of different ones that I might want to pick. And um, if I want to run one of these, I can click on the chat bot choice right here. And where it says select a model to load, these are the ones that I've pre-installed. So here's one called Code Llama, that's kind of like Copilot. So this is a good model if you want to ask it questions about how to code. Here's one called Mistral, that's more of a generalized one. So if I go and click on select a model and then hit Mistral, I'm going to go right here and I want you to watch in the task manager as that gets loaded. So this is going to get loaded right here. And we're going to see the memory increase in my CP and my GPU memory. Okay, so in a second here, you're going to see that pop up, and then we'll go and say hello. Now this is happening entirely locally. Okay, that means that you see how it's a little slower than you'd expect. That's being streamed locally. Now I'm going to click eject. Think of like ejecting a tape from a VCR if you're old. I'll hit eject the model. And then you see a little bit of memory is getting released here. And then let's pick Code Llama, which is a slightly larger model. And then we're going to accept the new prompt. The system prompt is basically the prompt that it's being set up with, like, you're a helpful assistant or whatever. Okay, so we'll load up that model. You see a little bump there. And um, you'll notice, though, how the bump is very small. Well, I'm going to actually offload more of the model. This model has 32 layers. You can pick the amount of layers that you think you can handle uh, and load more of that model into memory. It'll be faster. So I'm going to actually go nuts and click negative one. And negative one is going to load all of the models. Uh, in this case, this will be 32, 32 layers, excuse me, all of the layers rather, pardon me, not all the models. So I'm going to hit reload model. And then let's watch what happens to my GPU as I do that. Okay, so I hit negative one. We're going to see this start pumping up. There it is. Big move. So that's loaded the entire model into, into memory there. Okay, so I'm going to get Code Llama. And I will then say, write me a C-sharp 
Hello World app. See how much faster that is? That entire thing was loaded into, into memory there, into GPU memory. But I want to point out that all that work is happening, but very little is happening on my CPU and the memory itself. So we're pretty much chilling. Okay. So imagine yourself on an airplane having a conversation with a large language model. In this case here, the model is, as we mentioned, 7 billion parameters to quantize. So it's about, uh, I think, about 4 gigs. You see that GPU memory right here, right? Right down there is increased. Now I'm going to go ahead and eject model. You want to watch it immediately getting ejected right there. Pick another one like phi. Accept the new prompt. I'll push my task manager over a little bit. You can see the memory just popped up again right there. And we'll start a new chat. We're going to set our GPU layers to negative one. Every time I make a change, it needs to uh, unload and reload. Are you there? I'm currently present. Make me a taco recipe. There you go. Cool. Now, if I've got this model ready to go in local, this is cool. Thank you. I'm going to go ahead and minimize that because we know that we've got it loaded in memory. I'm going to click on this button over here. And this is where I think the magic happens from a developer's perspective. Let's click on that. This is going to go and create a local HTTP server that behaves like, behaves like, pretends to be the OpenAI API. So I'm going to hit start server. And what that's going to do is it's going to make a local host server here on localhost port 1234. And if I go and grab that, we'll just do a get. I can do that with curl or I can do that in the browser. So I'll just do it in the browser to start with. I just hit localhost 1234 slash v1 slash models. And you can see there's the GGUF. That's the, like the a zip file for, for AI. Uh, and it's sitting in my cache folder in this cache LM Studios folder. And in fact, we can go down there into that folder and let's take a look. There's the, look at that. There's the cached models that I've got. In fact, I can select them all, right click, hit properties. And you can see that I've got 17 gigs worth of downloaded models on my local machine. Again, all this work can be done entirely in offline airplane mode. Airplane mode works on the ground. Okay, let's take this curl right here. Curl, of course, is going to let me go and do an HTTP call. And we'll go and tell the thing, hey, always answer in rhymes. That's the system prompt. And then introduce yourself. And we'll go and call that out with curl. But this might not work because it's on multiple lines. Yeah, so let's, let's go and try that in Ubuntu. Otherwise, I'm going to have to change that prompt to not include the backslashes. Okay, so here it's saying, fail to connect to localhost, connection refused. So let's go back here and make sure that that is on. I'm ensuring that the server is started, and sometimes you have to make changes and do, do reloads. Okay, and you can see down here, if it doesn't like what it's getting called, it will, it'll holler at you. Okay. Okay, sometimes this for us, this is a little frustrating. This happens to me uh, when dealing with multi-line calls to curl. I'm just going to put all of this on one line for now, which is a little lame, but it is what it is. Okay, so here it's saying couldn't connect to server. So let's go ahead and confirm that that server is in fact running and that I'm not making a mistake. Okay, so here it's saying localhost refused to connect. I'll go ahead and close that. I'm going to go and confirm that we're on the right place and that we're there. So somehow it's gone. I'm going to start and stop it again. There we go. Bring it back. Okay. Now you see that there's a bit of a pause there, right? See how that was a bit of a pause? There's your 
content right there. That's because that's not streaming. Remember when we did the chat, it went in its stream, then it went chunks, chunks, chunks. In this case, it had to wait until it was done. Additionally, if you look over here in GPU offload, I didn't load all the layers, so that's going to make it even slower as well. So let's change that to negative one. Reload to apply changes. We're going to reload that again. I again call note to the, there is the GPU memory. See how it pops up? Now the whole model is loaded in the GPU. Let's go ahead and try it again down here. And then we're going to get that. Uh, so I'm going to have to, again, start and stop. It looks like the server's got a little hiccup there. And then it comes back a lot faster. I also want to call out that it uh, is returning different stuff. First time it said this. Second time it said this. It's an important reminder that models like this are not typically deterministic. It's going to say different things each time. So you want to count on that. Uh, and I also want to count, call out that this is free, right? This is These are open source models. So in this case here, it's running on my local machine. This is the Microsoft Phi 2 model running on this local machine. Now this is using LM Studio. So I'm going to go and eject that model and close it. And then I want to call out another model that you can go and check out. It's all free. This is Olama, okay? Olama.com. You can download it on Windows and it'll install itself like this. And it'll run in your tray. The tray is the little thing down by the, the clock. So then once you've got that installed, you can go and run Olama at the command line. And if it's paying attention, it'll load up and it'll say, okay, start a server. So very similar kind of concept as we saw with LM Studio. You can run different models. You can list out models that are available and uh, that'll all run on Windows or Linux. In this case here, I don't have any models. So we could say, go and pull a model. I think Olama 2 is a model that we could pull. I can never remember the model here. Uh, on this machine here. There we go. Llama 2, rather. Pardon me. Llama 2. It'll go and pull that model down. And this model is about 3 gigs. So that, in that case, is taking uh, a bit of time to go and pull that down. I'll pull myself out of the way so you can see how fast that's coming down. So you are going to have to tolerate that one-time pull of about 4 gigs. And if you're doing work like this, like I am, and you're running around pulling models left and right, as you saw when I looked in the cache for LM Studio, I could end up with 20, 30, 50 gigs of models very, very quickly. So you're going to want to be conscious of that. That space uh, is going to feed, uh, feed uh, fill up your hard drive pretty fast. Okay, so we just pulled LM, uh, Llama 2 rather. It's going to go and then validate that. Do a little verification. Grab another layer. Come on, let's go. People are watching. It's so funny that there's like this big one here, which is like four gigs, and then a bunch of little stuff, little, little top things. There you go. And then we'll go and say run. So it's thinking. Hey, are you there? There's your reply. Make me a C Sharp app. Now, Llama 2 is not a great you know, app for C Sharp. It's more of a chat bot. But how are you doing? Tell me about Scott Hanselman. This is and this is lies. This is this is the thing about models like this. This is nonsense. Look at this. March 1964. Not anything. Uh, that's not a thing. Not from San Francisco. Did not grow up in the Bay Area. Didn't do any of this stuff. Never worked at Borland. Um, did work at Microsoft. It's just this is unhinged. Now it says I have a consulting business. Uh, called Hansel Minutes. No, I have a podcast. So you get the idea, right? You got to expect what you expect, uh, which is expect little. I'm going to go ahead and hit buy. And I want to call out one last thing that you can do, which is another option. If you don't want to install any of these things, but you have Docker here, I want to go ahead and run Docker. Right now I'm not running it. So I'm going to start running the Docker desktop on this machine. Here comes Docker. It's going to go ahead and fire up. Okay. So now Docker started up. Go ahead and say Docker images as this thing spins up. There you go. There's a bunch of Docker images. Now I'm going to say Docker run. I just run uh, Llama, uh, Olama rather, as a Docker image. Okay. 
So there it's running right there, serving. Now I could say go and run it. So without using the dot the Olama Windows application, I'm using I'm doing the same thing. Hey there. What's two plus two? Cool. So that is running it entirely in a container. Now, when you're doing that, though, of course, you need uh, WSL, you need Docker, you need a good GPU, you need to be monitoring your GPU memory at all times. You can see that my GPU memory is kind of working a little hard right there. With Olama, you need to right click on it and quit. So I just right clicked and quit it. You can see that the memory just got released when I right click on Windows and, and quit that. Simply saying buy isn't enough to release that, uh, that memory. So we've got a couple of different options here for running local models. We've got Olama. We can download that, run it locally. Mac, Linux, and also Windows Preview just came out. We got LM Studio. And then of course you saw me just run those inside of Docker, in this case on Windows, in just two lines. Uh, Docker run right there. I've just of course gotten rid of it. And then Docker exec. So local models are cool. Even cooler when they can pretend to be open AI endpoints, save you time, save you money, uh, ensure privacy, and also give you some performance. Um, again, we saw that with some of these models, they can, uh, they're can they not they're not grounded. We used to say hallucinate, but you want to invert that and think about it as being more grounded in reality. So you need to consider those groundings when you are uh, implementing these kind of things in your application. So that was uh, local models in 15 minutes. Uh, hopefully this was useful. If it is, please share the video, like, and subscribe. Smash that bell. Uh, and I'll see you again later.